Good evening, everybody. Uh, first off, I want to welcome everybody uh, here this evening. Uh, this is my one of my favorite times of the year, not only because it's close to spring after some vicious weather we've all had, but it's also a very important month to prevent uh, colon cancer and really get the word out. And I'm sure the makeup of this room has uh, different groups of people in the sense some of you have gotten colon cancer screening. Some of you are hearing about the importance of colon cancer screening for the first time. But I think uh, we'll all learn uh, from the speakers tonight uh, and uh, leave here spreading the message, not just for the month, month of March, but all year round, uh, the importance of uh, colon cancer awareness uh, and, uh, and prevention. Uh, I encourage you to all write down your questions. Uh, we want to answer every single one of them, and we're going to save that towards the uh, end of our program. We have a very uh, uh, interesting and informative program. Uh, my topic is going to be the, the what, when, and uh, why uh, for colon cancer screening, and we're going to get started with that. So we live in this paradox for colon cancer, colon cancer in itself because colon cancer is the, is the number two cause of uh, cancer-related death in the United States. Uh, and how do we get that, uh, you know, how does it become number two? Uh, so number, number one for males uh, is uh, lung cancer. Uh, number one for females is uh, lung cancer. And then you have uh, prostate cancer and breast cancer. And then colon cancer is number three when you just look at the genders individually. But when you uh, add the two numbers for colon cancer together, uh, it uh, uh, comes up to number two. And uh, colon cancer, uh, you know, like so many cancers, but particularly this one, is very preventable and curable, and it's really just catching it early. Uh, catching it in its early form or catching it before it even becomes cancer by finding a polyp. So first off, we have to figure out what the what is. Uh, so what is colon cancer? You hear all different sorts of names. There's a colon, there's a rectum. Some, some people will call it colorectal cancer. Some people will say CRC. And essentially what it means is, is that uh, uh, in the wall of the colon, uh, there's, uh, there's an abnormality that occurs over time, and the tissue goes from normal cells uh, to precancerous cells, uh, then to, to cancerous cells. But most of the time, it starts off as this benign polyp. And there are different types of colon polyps. Uh, the one that uh, we care most about is the one that uh, is precancerous, and that is uh, an adenoma. And I'm not going to get too technical here. Uh, but uh, when you do have your colonoscopy or any cancer prevention test, uh, uh, you know, your doctor or the nurse who calls to give you the results will say this was precancerous or this was benign. So it's important to, to, know, to know some of the, the words. So there are some tests. You know, we're going to go beyond the, the day of the week. That was a nice warm-up, and I wish it was Saturday and sun or Sunday, too. Uh, so, the, so the first question I have for you, and uh, these questions are some of the myths about colon cancer. Uh, so who gets uh, colon cancer? A, men, B, women, C, both men and women. So we have a few more seconds. I don't think I'm allowed to click over yet. And good news, this is a repeat test. So if we don't get all 100 the first go around, at the end we're going to review all those questions and we're going to make sure we get it right. So that's terrific. 98%, uh, both men and women. And, uh, and that is true. So it, it doesn't favor gender. Men and women are uh, at risk equally uh, for colon cancer. Now what about the percentage of colorectal cancer diagnosed uh, at the age of 50 or higher? A, 25%, B, 50%, C, 60%, D, 90%. And I was told I'm not allowed to give hints. So, so we're all over the map, uh, the, you know, but the, the truth is is that the ma majority of colon cancers are diagnosed over the age of 50, uh, but that doesn't mean that everybody is going to get recommended to get a colonoscopy or some sort of colon cancer prevention test 
uh, you know, at 50. We may, you know, your physician may recommend it earlier. And you're going to learn more about that, uh, you know, with one of our uh, speakers, uh, uh, Dr. Smith, and she's going to talk about family history, and that's going to change for some individuals. Uh, that's why you know we have these broad recommendations of when you could, when you should start doing cancer prevention, especially for colon cancer. But then everything really gets individualized, uh, you know, to each patient. So who gets colon cancer? Uh, both men and women, uh, people of all racial and ethnic backgrounds and 90% are over the age of 50, and that's why when you talk to your friends and family members or even your doctor, they'll always ask them, uh, you know, preventive test questions, you know, how old you are, did you ever get a colonoscopy or some form of screening, and for most individuals, it'll be over 50. Most of those, there's no family history. This is a very important one. Uh, some, uh, you know, many people have this notion that you don't need to get a cancer prevention test, whether it's colon cancer or something else, because it's not in their family. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, uh, colon cancer, and I've seen this in uh, my patient population as well, is that many of them don't have a, you know, a family history, uh, and they call it, it's a sporadic uh, cancer. So, uh, so that does not, uh, you know, prevent you from getting screened. Uh, and also, um, family history does increase the risk, and as I mentioned earlier, you're going to risk stratify by working with closely with your physician of when you should get uh, colon cancer screening. So how do we prevent this? You got to get screened. Now there's this window, there's this uh, prevention window. You know, how long does it take for a, you know, for a polyp to become a cancer? For, ma for the majority of polyps, we, we believe it's about eight to 10 years. Uh, but as we get better at diagnosing and preventing colon cancers on the physician side, on the medical team side, we realize that there are even new variant of polyps out there that we're aware of that may be even a shorter window. Uh, so, that, so the best thing that we could do is to make sure that everybody gets screened at the appropriate time. But it's a really simple equation. No polyp, no cancer. You know, it doesn't get any easier, especially for preventing this disease. So you're seeing two pictures here. There's early stage, uh, which is often uh, no symptoms and high rate of cure. Uh, and this is meant to be the wall of the colon. And what it's showing is, is that uh, th this polyp or, or early cancer is uh, in, in the wall of the colon, but it hasn't gone through the colon, where a more advanced uh, tumor is likely to grow outside the wall of the colon uh, and also grow into the wall of the colon where someone could uh, experience symptoms. Uh, so Early stage is pretty simple. If you have no symptoms, it's going to be found by getting screened. Now, if for, for some reason, you know, everybody should always, I always tell my patients to kind of gut check their body, you know when something's not right. Uh, you know what's normal for you. Not everybody lives by a, a textbook. And uh, if you notice that there's something different, especially with your bowels, whether it's rectal bleeding or changing the, the, the shape of your, your bowel movements, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, it's not a, a comfortable topic to talk about but visit, the, visit me. I get all sorts of stories and all sorts of descriptions and nothing phases uh, us. And so please, you know, ask us uh, because uh, it's, a, it's important and the little clues that you tell us from noticing that there's a change in your body, you know, we could pick things up uh, earlier and give you the proper recommendations. So next question, screening is done when you have no symptoms, true or false? So the correct answer is uh, true. We want to we want to do screening, and it's not just for colon cancer. You know, for any cancer that has a preventative test, we want to do it when there's no symptoms, uh, because that's the the puts us in the best position, uh, puts the person that's having this test done in the best position for the ultimate goal, which is cure and to be disease free. So who should get screened? So first we talk about average risk, which is the majority of individuals, and that's men and women uh, starting at the age of 50. But, sh uh, but screening should be done before symptoms occur. So there are different types of tests that we have out there. 
And uh, even though uh, you know, you're going to hear about colonoscopy and colonoscopy being the gold standard, and you may ask yourself, you know, why is colonoscopy the gold standard? Be and the reason is, is that colonoscopy is the only test that could identify a polyp and remove it. So here are our choices, though, and, and really, it's important to do something. Uh, you know, if there's one thing, you know, if you have a friend or family member, or even if you're trying to convince yourself, you know, if you could do something, whether it's a stool-based test, and a stool-based test, the whole concept of that is, is that uh, someone would collect their stool, and we're looking to see if there's blood in the stool. And recently, there's even been a, uh, you know, we've taken it one step uh, further. Uh, there's, a, there's a new stool test that uh, checks for blood and also checks for a DNA mutation. And I'm not going to get too technical, uh, but uh, it's felt that the combination will help us, uh, you know, pick up, uh, you know, additional cases that the uh, stool blood test alone uh, wouldn't pick up. Uh, there's flexible sigmoidoscopy, uh, which, you would, which is where a flexible tube with a camera just goes up to the, the bottom third of your colon. Uh, and usually that is uh, often does, done with an annual stool uh, blood test. Uh, there's CT colonography, uh, which is a CAT scan-based colonoscopy. And uh, the concept there is, is that it's uh, meant to identify uh, polyps and, and early tumors. But the difference between a regular colonoscopy is, is that it cannot take a tissue sample. It cannot remove a polyp. And you'd have to ultimately get a colonoscopy. So, so for the first three that we're talking about, stool-based tests, flexible sigmoidoscopy, CT colonography, if any of those are positive, uh, where the, the stool test shows blood, if the sigmoidoscopy shows that there's a polyp in the lower part of the colon, or the CT colonography shows a polyp or, or a potential tumor, uh, the person will be recommended to get colonoscopy. And then there's colonoscopy. Colonoscopy allows us to look at the entire colon. Your colon is about four to six feet in length. Uh, CT colonography, colonoscopy, and flexible sig sigmoidoscopy all require uh, some sort of a bowel preparation to clean out the colon. And that's a very important uh, part because the cleaner the colon, uh, the easier it is for us to identify uh, polyps and uh, early tumors. And colonoscopy, if uh, someone has one today and there are no polyps found and the preparation of the bowel is good to excellent, the recommendation would be a, an exam in 10 years. So as I mentioned, colonoscopy looks through the whole uh, rectum, uh, early detection and prevention. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so uh, let me just show you two images. Uh, this is a flat colon polyp, uh, this red area here. Uh, the, uh, the rest of the colon looks normal. And uh, again, this is just normal colon. I could tell you that our images uh, today, if you have high definition television at home, we have high definition colonoscopy. Just like you'd never watch a sporting event without high definition or a movie, I would never watch a colonoscopy without high definition. Uh, this is another example of a polyp. This is all normal tissue here. It's a mushroom stalk, and this is the polyp that we want to remove, and this is what it looks like. And keep in mind, everything uh, that we do in uh, endoscopy is magnified. So when it actually comes out of the body, it's very small. These are up-close images. Uh, these are not big uh, things that you're, you're seeing. Uh, so increased or high risk, if you have a, a, a family member that has colon polyps or colon cancer, if there's some other underlying inflammatory condition, such as uh, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, which uh, uh, falls under inflammatory bowel disease, you may need to get screened at a younger age. So what about access? Uh, you know, it's important to work with your primary care doctor, to then uh, speak with the gastroenterologist, which is what I do, uh, to talk about uh, colonoscopy. And we spend a lot of time, we do a lot of colonoscopies under our belt before uh, we go into practice. And uh, even colonoscopy, we continue to improve it. Uh, we have uh, new uh, imaging modalities, and some of the things uh, this is some of the things we're working with uh, here at NYU, such as full spectrum endoscopy, which gives you a wider field of view. Uh, uh, cuff or balloon assisted colonoscopy. These are mechanical enhancements on the colonoscope because the colon is not a straight pipe. It's got these folds or ridges and things could hide and we want to make sure things don't hide when someone has their exam. And there's also a camera pill someone could swallow. This is not a first line screening recommendation but sometimes uh, someone will have a colonoscopy and the doctor can't get it all the way around. And there's different reasons for that, uh, but this is just another alternative where someone's able to swallow a pill, and when it gets to the colon, it starts taking lots of images, thousands and thousands of images, and we watch it uh, like we're watching a movie, but just fast forward, because watching eight hours of regular speed uh, colon, you know, that's a very long time. Uh, the preparation has also gotten much better. 
from years ago. We, we are, we're having uh, uh, patients uh, drink a lot less, uh, so it's more tolerable, and there's even tremendous work being done in the bowel prep uh, space, and a sneak preview I could tell you is that uh, they're even looking at incorporating it with the food, which is a bunch of years away uh, ver and moving away from the, the liquid full liquid bowel prep. So people are working in all different uh, areas, improving the diagnostics, improving the, the bowel preparation, because we know that that's a challenge uh, for some individuals. So symptoms, again, there are often no symptoms. Uh, and uh, colon cancer can overlap with a gastrointestinal illness, but pay attention for symptoms as I talked about. If you see blood in your stool, if you see change in your stool caliber, uh, unexplained abdominal pain or weight loss, if you're feeling tired, it's better to just go to your doctor and they tell you that everything is fine uh, versus just pushing it off because we're all busy and we're always moving and doing things. So no matter what, if you're not sure, uh, please see your doctor. Uh, you want to get screened because we want to screen people when they're feeling fine. Uh, colon cancer is very preventable and uh, by getting screen screened you could save your life and you could encourage someone to get screened and you could potentially save their life.